What is up? Welcome to another edition of Sacktown Movie Buffs. Once again, I'm Kier, and this is Jason. And today we are doing another interview for Flickfair, um, one of their films that they have uh, streaming on their website, which is called Home, which was directed by Lindsay Barros. And uh, so we'll be doing uh, just a brief recap on that, and then we'll bring her in, and we'll ask her some questions about her inspiration for the film itself. Uh, so Home is a short film. It's a short horror film. Uh, it's about six minutes and some change. I don't know, six minutes and 50 seconds, something of that nature. Um, and it's basically uh, set on like a girl that's like living in a house that basically every time she tries to leave, she goes through a door and it basically leads her like back into the house again. Um, so it, it's a horror film. Um, it's like a short horror film, but I like the way that it kind of leaves the film kind of ambiguous or you don't know exactly mm -hmm. yeah. what's going on. Um, I did look up the brief synopsis of the film and it sounds like it has to do, may also have to do something with like mental illness and that sort of thing. So that's one of the questions I wanted to kind of talk with the director about, um, just to kind of get the inspiration for the horror film itself. But I really love the, uh, the cinematography was great. Um, I really like the the music as well. It was very ominous mm -hmm. and kind of creepy. Um, so I really enjoyed that also. Uh, what was your thoughts on it, Jason? Uh, same thing. Same thing. I liked, uh, you know, the camera work was nice. I liked the setting, like the cabin in the woods kind of setting with the, I like the music um, a lot. And like you, I like the kind of um, ambiguous nature of it. And I know this, this says something about mental illness, but um, I think it's the kind of movie that you could watch with, um, and come away with a whole variety of thoughts or, uh, you know, impressions about what it, what it means or what it's about. And I, I you know, I, I like that kind of stuff in general. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. Great. Great. Well, I say without further ado, we bring in Lindsay and then we can uh, talk with her a little bit about, uh, get her impression and interpretation of the film. So I'm going to bring her in real quick and I'll uh, just take her a second or two. And there she is. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you guys. doing today? Thanks for having me. Not so a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> and so I, I did catch that you are originally from Brazil. You spent some Brazil. time in, in, in New York, but now you're in Los Angeles. Is, is that correct? Actually, no, I live in New York, but I'm just here for work. In Got LA, it. So, wow. yeah. Got yeah. it. <laughs> Um, Brazil, as you can tell by my accent. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Well, great. Uh, so, yeah, we, we both really enjoyed the film. Um, like I said, we do a lot of interviews mm -hmm. with Flick with Fair, and so we, we try to pick different films, different variety of films, and we've never really done a horror film from Flick Fair before, mm -hmm. so yours was kind of the first horror film that we actually had a chance oh, to, awesome. to, to, to review, <laughs> and so I thought it was really interesting, and I, I thought it said so much in a six-minute running time that, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. films that take – an hour and a half horror films to get to the point. And I, I, I kind of really enjoyed that it was so short, but you kind of get the gist of it within just that short amount of time. I appreciate um, you guys saying that. It's really hard to condense an idea into six minutes, right? So right. appreciate you saying that. So, so I guess my first question for you was just kind of what was, what was your uh, inspiration for the film itself? So you're totally right. The film is about mental illness, you know, and you can interpret however you want. To me, it was more about domestic violence, as you can tell. I don't want to spoil the film mm -hmm. too much, but yeah, yeah. this kid is trapped inside a house, and that's just like the you know, metaphorical way of saying whenever you want to leave a relationship or any kind of relationship, you're always stuck you know, inside this kind of like vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why mm -hmm. she's in this loop, right? And we kind of use, like, I tried to use uh, some sorts of... Um, horror metaphors and horror cliches just because it feels like being in a horror movie in that sense. So that's where home came from the, you know, yeah. like, and I like bringing like this type of, you know, social issues to life. Mm -hmm. I think it's important mm -hmm. for us to, to, you know, give space for this kind of stuff. And I think some movies do, but they're not explicit like home. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a very, very, very good point. Um, so how, um, how long was the, the process of filming the film? Did you shoot that last year or this year? Or, or? Shot, yeah, shot right before the pandemic. You know, didn't mm. know if the pandemic was going to happen. It was on February 2020 mm -hmm. uh, in this house in um, upstate New York in Greenwood Lake. I don't know if you guys heard of it. And shout mm -hmm. out to the owners of the house. They gave us release to all the painting. It's such a beautiful house. It's yeah. impressive. You know, the production design, if I had to produce that, oh my God, it would be like, <laughs> you know, it was ready for me, like such a good find. Um, and it took me three days to shoot it. I wanted to do actually a solar film, you know, a shot on broad daylight, 
but it was impossible because we had no light. It was like gloomy and weird. And so I had to refigure like, and do all the lighting inside the house it was really, really painful. And I'm not a cinematographer, but I had to do it. So producer, cinematographer, you know, like sound designer, music, <laughs> everything was done by me. So. Well, good, good. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah I was just going to ask you, if you how much help you had with it in terms of getting yeah. the, the whole process completed, but you, it sounds like you kind of kind of did it all. So that's that's great. Well, where did you yeah. find the uh, the actress who, who was in the film? So yeah, she's a good friend of mine. She's a very good actress from Venezuela and she lives here in New York, here in the United States, right? <laughs> in New York, she's wonderful, very expressive. Uh, and we decided to not have dialogue just because we wanted to be an, an atmospherical type of film. If you guys understand what I'm saying, more like what's mm -hmm. the feeling you want to take away from it, right? right? Yeah. So that's yeah, that's why home is just about that glimpse in this woman's life, you know, and the fact that she's trapped inside this house. We don't know what happens at the end, right? You, you can interpret many different ways. Absolutely. Did she kill herself? It's like, is she a ghost? What is it? So. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that it left it kind of ambiguous where you have to use your own interpretation of exactly what was going on mm -hmm. and kind of what happened at the end as well. So I thought that was really neat. And uh, kind of you could kind of reflect on the film a little bit as well, that it didn't completely spell everything out for you. And you had to kind of use a little bit of your own interpretation. So I really enjoy mm -hmm. movies, or horror movies or movies in general that kind of sometimes leave it kind of ambiguous. And you kind of you kind of kind of figure out on your own or use your own interpretation yeah. of what you Let the audience, you know pull the piece, put the pieces together and that's how I think. And also guys, no budget, like no budget at all. You know, I had nothing <laughs> <laughs> to rent the equipment and the house. So it was like 5K, you know, like 8K, like max. That's all I well, had. And that's, well, that's it. good. And I had well, to do all my stuff. Well, that's good. <laughs> you know, we, we talked to a lot of people that we, we've talked to and, and they've, they've done short films as well, where it's been like six minutes, 12 minutes, 15 mm -hmm. minutes. And, you know, and like their, their biggest thing was the budget and, and having to hire actors and having to hire, you know, a whole crew, cinematographers and, you know, all the, the score and all that good stuff. So it's kind of nice that you were able to complete a full project basically on a very, very small budget. So that's pretty impressive. You so you had some questions as well, Jason? Yeah, did you did you say you do did the score as well? Hey, how you doing? I did the score, um, Jason. I did everything. I, oh, I know the score. You wow. know, it's a bit. It, it it is something like I'm a huge fan of John Carpenter's movies. You know, so oh, that was, man. you know, <laughs> my inspiration. You can <laughs> yeah. tell it's very. And I deliberately thought I want this movie to start with a, like impact fully score like to make people wake up and like what is this shit you know because it's so like in your face <laughs> right. you yeah and he was like Lindsay why are you doing that I said I want it to be different you know usually you would start with a very like you know pan into the house very kind of like low music means low music you know like building the suspense but I just wanted to hit on your, your face and something's going to happen here and just watch and see it's such like five minutes you know six minutes so I have to use the time very wise. No way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I um I, I could see the inspiration from John Carpenter because it kind of reminded me a little bit of a of a John Carpenter. Right. Not not quite the like Halloween, but Halloween. Yeah, it was yeah, but it was very it was very creepy. It, it created a very creepy atmosphere for sure. So. Thank you guys for saying that. Yeah, and I, I I like the uh the like the when it would get really loud and dissonant with the strings, you know, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Was that all on a keyboard? It almost sounds like like real violins, like going, you know, like. Keyboard, you know, I didn't, I didn't oh. have, I'm not a sound, you know, like designer, but I, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I just a tip for, um, you know, um, directors and people, filmmakers, they want to make films. If they want to download this app called Output. I don't know if you guys heard of it from Arcade. You can make sounds, you can make music. It's very, it's not easy, but it, it has all the instruments for you and all. You know, it can, if you have a little bit of time, just try and play with that because that will help you a lot. That's cool. Cool, cool. cool. yeah. It's yeah. good to know. Maybe we might even use it for our own broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> it's 10 bucks a month, I think, you know, it's worth yeah. it. Uh, it. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, that sounds pretty cool, actually. Um, so, was this your first film that you uh, mm -hmm. made, or is this. Uh, or is this my first film. Okay, perfect. And to be yeah. honest, guys, Good I don't job. think it's great. You know, thank you. I don't think it's great. I think there's <laughs> lots of learnings. You know, uh, especially with cinematography and sound, it's so hard to capture sound and mm -hmm. make it crisp and editing too. You know, it's a very hard film to edit. 
Um, the house was really dark inside, you know, the woods. So you got to mm -hmm. plan for lighting, you know, and just one person thinking of it all makes it difficult. So I would suggest people to find their team and find people that are, you know, available to help you because sometimes it's really hard when you're doing it on your own, but nothing, you know, prevents you from doing it. So just go and do yeah, it. I'm sure just make it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it was quite a learning experience for yeah, sure. So shot on yeah. the gimbal with a Sony A7R, you know, three, very like cheap camera, very lightweight. I used three lenses, um, uh, vintage lenses inside the closet. Remember the, the, the scene inside the mm -hmm. closet? It's another horror movie cliche. Uh, and another mm -hmm. two lenses, 50 millimeters and an 85. 85, guys, terrible, super shaky. So beware of that if you're doing handheld. You're going to shake a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That, that's the learning and lots of yeah. lights like tiny little led lights you see the red light on the floor this is all practical all shot on camera so no vfx you know nothing just oh and apart from, I yeah, a, I, I, sorry go ahead jason oh i'm sorry i'm sorry um i was going to ask something about the you mentioned the cabin was already prepared for you is that a cabin that um that is used for like filming movies or did somebody live there because it looked very much just like a house that somebody lived in you know which is it you know it, which helped for the realism of it oh yeah people live there so they were you know they were traveling and just rented on airbnb and i was super lucky to find oh, okay. it you know? oh cool cool yeah. well yeah <laughs> very yeah. simple you know and uh, they signed a release they you know there's so many paintings guys if you look at the movie again you see it's so well dressed the mm. house is completely amazing so there nothing it was like 500 a day so nothing prevents you from doing something just got to save some money and make it you know make nice. it and, and and you shot it in that's, yeah. that's and i couldn't remember did you say you shot it in yeah. one day or no it was actually two days two and days, one okay. night yeah, got so it. The, the night scenes you see were just one night we went through the night just shooting three girls and the actor and me so one was holding the, the boom with the sound, right, with the mic, and the other one was spraying atmospheric spray. That's all that they, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. It was fun. Fun weekend. That, yeah, that, that reminds me, like, one thing, like, I, I, I notice odd things in movies sometimes, and I really like the way um, the end credits were kind of had this backdrop of, like, this dark room with, like, this spooky mist. It was very like 1930s universal kind of like uh exactly. you know fog, was that just like a fog machine or what fog machine in black background back you know black backdrop very simple but i just wanted to you know tie back to what you just said like no movie but not being so old a little bit you know a little bit if it was made today how we would it look you know and also, also the music was i made the type i made myself too so I think it's important for us as directors or aspiring directors to be multidimensional, right? Don't just be mm -hmm. one thing. You see Dave Blincher, he's like a visual artist, he's a painter, you know? We have to be like that. So, absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah that's, absolutely. That's how I think, because then you can prepare the treatment yourself, you know the vision, you know how to brief people well, so. So you're, mm -hmm. um, nice. I know you said this was your first uh, film, uh, but I know you also travel between like New York and Los Angeles. So are you are you in the film industry then, or is it? Yeah. So I work in advertising, so okay. not in the film industry, but we're shooting here in LA commercials. You know, who watches commercials these days? So <laughs> unfortunately, <Yeah. laughs> um, with all the with, with all the Netflix and Amazons and that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. I I, fa I fast forward commercials. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I skip them myself. I don't blame you guys. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, the, the profession allows me to kind of like save some money and try to, you know, make my own projects on the side. So I think I'm going to migrate eventually to being a full time director. Yeah, I was just, nice. yeah, I was just going to ask you just in terms of is this something that you can want to continue to do? And do you have any other projects that you're potentially working on now or? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to shoot another one of these with the same actress. I'm going to, you know, dress her differently and change her appearance, of course, uh, on the end of June. So it's okay. going to be about anxiety and how anxiety lies to you. So I like bringing this type of like, you know, things that are happening to us as a society nowadays and try to put an idea there with a narrative and make people think about it. So it's going to be kind of like her breaking the fourth wall with a little bit of voiceover and dwelling with the voiceover, anxiety in your mind, you know, playing. I'm not gonna spoil too much because I'm still writing right. 
right and making them you know it's going to be a very atmospheric as well very handheld very uh documentary style because i think you need to make people you know immersed in the story like that i don't want it to look plastic or anything if you guys know what i mean right. very mm -hmm. real very raw mm -hmm. absolutely so that's, that's in the works well, that sounds so, sounds sounds pretty interesting for sure. So, um, yeah, no, great, great. Well, yeah. Um, how was um just going back to home? How has the reception been so far for home? Has it been overwhelmingly uh, positive for you, or? Yeah, everyone likes it. Some people don't understand it. You know, they like what happened to her, and I said, guys, you don't have to like understand it. It's just like what's the feeling you you walk away, you know, after you watch it, you know. And I don't want people to overthink it too much. I want just people to. Uh, play scenarios in their heads and try to figure out what fits them best, you know, for you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a movie that adapts to your interpretation. So everyone is loving it. Uh, they don't like the music at the beginning. People are like, ah, I don't want to watch this. This is too much. <laughs> but, but, you know, guys, I, I did it on purpose. It was like premeditated. No, I, I personally enjoyed it. Um, you know, I enjoyed the, mm -hmm. the music at the beginning personally. But, you know, I know everybody has their own style and their own flavor. And, exactly. and you know, so that you're... The, the thing about filmmaking is you're never going to please everybody no matter what you do, you know? So it's just one of those things where you have to just, you know, if you, if there's something that you enjoy and that you love, I kind of feel like you just have to just go for it and, you know, and just kind of mm -hmm. see where the chips will fall for it. So, but that's great. That's great. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Very subjective. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. I mean, it's all any, any of the arts is, is going to be subjective at the end of the day. So you're, mm -hmm. you're never going to find everybody that, that loves it. But, but like I said, I, I personally enjoyed it. I, I thought it was great and would definitely Thank love you. to see a, you know, whatever your, whatever project you have coming up next for sure. I appreciate so. you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, do you have any additional questions, Jason? Oh yeah. Um, I have one more. Um, so you mentioned John Carpenter, who is, uh, my personal favorite filmmaker. I'm a big, 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 big horror fan. So I was wondering uh, if you, who were some of your other uh, influences, your filmmaking heroes and such? Man, you know, the guy that I like, James Wen, do you know that guy? Made The oh, Conjuring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, The Conjuring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where he is right now, you know, what, what is he making, but he, he directed Saw with two, uh, 2K, two you know, like was nothing. You know, he created mm -hmm. Saw, you know the series yeah i think he he's gonna be a really you know big promise in the horror he's already he you know of course oh, he yeah. is, but i love the his i love his style I, I think he's a true horror film of our generation you know mm -hmm. yeah so i would go with yeah him. i liked insidious a lot too oh yeah. my god Insidious, so good right yeah yeah, yeah. It's always, it kind of gets forgotten yeah, it kind of gets forgotten because the it's conjuring kind of yeah, made it was a bigger deal really, you know yeah, it was a bigger hit but yeah I, I love insidious it was like a modern day poltergeist for me yeah you know? i loved it <laughs> loved it too yeah i, I think nice. he's great yeah you, you know David you see, sorry go ahead jason uh, did you see um dead silence the one that he made no. about the little the marionette doll that one's really good you should check oh that one God, out sometime it. is it it's a new yeah. oh, okay I'm uh, watch no it. No, no, it came out. Silent? Uh, it's silent. Yeah, it came out. I don't know, two thousand five or so around there. I think it was it's before Insidious, maybe. It's not about Anna. So, Bell. Sorry, it's about oh no, it's about a uh, you know, like a marionette doll. You know, one of the dolls that you hear mm -hmm. knee and you pretend like it talks. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's very old fashioned, very 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 creepy and fun. Oh, yeah. I want to watch. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the tip. And you know, uh, David Sonderberg, they made uh, Lights Out and then the short film, and then it got bought by I think Warner Brothers, and they fucked up the film. Sorry for <laughs> swearing. <laughs> no that was a, like huge flop, right? That guy, yeah. I think we need to watch him because I think he he's got you know the the guest. Like I I think there's something about him in directing horror movies that is really interesting. And we don't see women directing horror movies. I want to see more of that too. You know. Yeah, so, that would be great as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. absolutely. There's not a not a whole lot out there um, in terms of in that in that avenue. But no, it'd be great to see uh, more more women like yourself. You know, getting mm -hmm. into the horror movie industry and and hopefully uh, adding a little bit more variety to it as well. So no, definitely. I agree. Totally agree. I want to see more, and I'll, I'll try to you know be opening the path for me. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Open up the doors. You never know. You just never know. So absolutely. Well, cool. Well, um, was there anything else that you wanted to add or you wanted to, uh, you know, have any of our listeners uh, pay attention to or should they just wait for the next film from you? Yeah. 
I think I said everything. And I think if you want to make a film, just go ahead and make it because you know you can shoot inside a hotel room. There's nothing that prevents you from making mm -hmm. a story as long as you have the story. And I think don't think about the technical issues too much. Think about what the story and what people want to you know interpret from your movie. What's the message that you want them to take away from? You? So that's all I would say. Absolutely. <laughs> it's about the story, Absolutely. guys. It's all about the message. Absolutely. Well, definitely. Well, yeah. we definitely look forward to your next project and uh, you have our emails. Obviously, uh, whenever you complete your next project, you're more than welcome to send it to us. And also, you know, obviously click there as well, because uh, they give everybody an avenue to because uh, they showcase your entire film. So you can actually go there and watch it on click fair. And so everybody has an opportunity awesome. to check it out as well. So. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Well, as always, we... great day, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem. Um, yeah. Well, as always, we ask that you like, subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification and to follow Sacktown Movie Buzz. We also want to direct everybody to check out Flick Fair as well because they have a lot of great streaming films uh, like Home and you can watch this one and, and other films there as well. And uh, as always, we'll be back with another show for you guys again real soon. We thank you for watching and hope you have a great day. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs>